Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we continue our ongoing coverage of the Civil War taking place inside the former state of Ethiopia and the Eritrean invasion of northern Tigray. Yes, Eritrean forces are still present in northern Tigray, and the uh, fractured state, once known as Ethiopia, t continues uh, to tear itself apart in other areas, uh, not just in the Tigray region. So first, I wanted to start off today's video by uh, ascertaining the opinion of Tigrayans. I would like to know what you think about the tentative agreements that have been reached currently, what we're seeing right now in the Tigray region. Do you feel that what is being done is okay? Is it in, in the best interest of the Tigray region and the uh, Tigrayan people? Now, we're uh, starting to see the formation and the creation of the uh, Tigrayan police, the Tigray police. Now, it would appear that in reality, that is now becoming the de facto Tigrayan defense forces. It appears that the TDF could be rebranding and renaming again under the current conditions that are taking place in the Tigray region the Tigray police are becoming the de facto army of the Tigray region now we're seeing the deployment of the uh, so-called uh, Tigrayan police now we don't know if that's the basis for the uh, the original uh, Tigrayan uh, uh, regional forces that existed that were the core nucleus uh, of what became the Tigrayan defense forces uh, in the Tigray region as we saw the Tigray region fully mobilized. We've heard convoluted reports and uncertain reports about the handover of heavy weapons and the prospective handover of light weapons as well. Now I can tell you that if the Tigrayan Defense Forces hands over its heavy weapons and more importantly in mass hands over its light weapons things could become incredibly precarious for the Tigray region. The Eritrean army, and the, more importantly, the current state of Eritrea, is omnipresent in the north. It is an incredibly vindictive regime. Its ultimate goal at the start of the war that took place uh, at the end of 2020 was the elimination of the TPLF. We know that for certain. And those goals essentially were not reached. So it's difficult to, uh, to say how even the current despotic regime of Eritrea feels about what is taking place currently in the Tigray region. But I think more importantly and ultimately it's up to the people of Tigray. Have the people of Tigray gone through so much anguish, so much hardship that it is even difficult for anyone in the Western world to really get their hands around what has happened? There are so many issues at play. And that those issues uh, for just the ordinary Tigrayan are, are insurmountable. 
you have Eatrian army present in your in your in your country that systematically rounds up fighting age males and takes them off to who knows where. You have rape gangs, Eatrian army rape gangs going into towns and villages and raping women. Compounding that, you have to find food. You are at risk of starving to death because of the anaconda strategy that has been put in place by the Abiy Ahmed regime. Which again, as I've talked about before, taking on the shape very much like what you see in Eatria. I have no doubt that a Biamed intends to become the dictator of the former state of Eatria. Or some sort of power sharing arrangement will be put in place between a Biamed and a CSF Worki. Guaranteed. So as the ordinary Tigrayans face either continued war or compounding that as well, the threat of starving to death, the threat of the Eatrian army, Amharan regional militias pillaging the countrysides, what do you do? So we will have to continue to watch, obviously, what is happening on the ground. I do not believe, at this point, based on the, uh, the leadership that is in Addis Ababa, the leadership that is in Asmara, Eatria, Asayas Afwerki, Obi Ahmed, at the end of the day, given that, as I've talked about before, the social contract between Tigray and Abiyamed has completely been broken, the idea that these two sides could coexist, and I'm talking about into the future, is incredibly difficult for one to get his, uh, his head around. So are we simply seeing the onset of a temporary ceasefire? Something that possibly the Tigrayan leadership designed to catch itself a breather. Obviously, the Tigrayan defense forces suffering from war fatigue. And it, it's very, it, it must be very important to note as well, with absolute doubt the Abi loyalist forces are suffering from war fatigue as well, including the Eatrian army. They've been going at it for a while now in some very intense campaigns with very, very heavy fighting. Compounding that, the Oromo Liberation Army in the south appears to be getting stronger appears to be taking the initiative in some of these ongoing operations that it is conducting. Furthermore, in Aromia, we are starting to see Aromia regional forces actively joining the Aromo Liberation Army. Is what, hap is what is happening now in Aromia a sign of something that could eventually happen in Tigray? Difficult to say, and I don't even want to go down that road as of yet. But without a doubt, there are some incredibly unhappy Tigrayans about the current situation that is currently happening.
I'm not going to get into how this could have happened, why this could have happened, and uh, there are a number of uh, scenarios that we are looking into. There are a number of reports, especially what happened in South Africa and beyond, but that's for another day. But obviously we will continue to uh, watch what's happening on the ground, and again, I would love to hear what the uh, the average Tigrayan uh, believes, thinks, feels about what is happening on the ground right now in Tigray. Is what is happening right now a necessary evil? Or is it simply a pause, a respite for further con- before further conflict takes hold? And again, it's, it's very difficult to believe that uh, these two people could coexist after what has happened over the last uh, better part of two years. And uh, compounding that, again, Eatrian army is still present in northwestern Tigray, Aksum, Shire, other areas. So we'll have to continue, monitor, and uh, we will absolutely bring you more content uh, as we get it, as we continue to monitor the situation. We are continuing to monitor what's happening in Romia very closely as well. At this point, the, uh, the AB loyalist forces are having serious, serious problems with the Romo Liberation Army. At this point, they simply do not know how to effectively counter this high-tempo insurgency operation that the OLA is conducting. So we'll have more reports coming in about continued operations by the OLA. We will have, uh, we will obviously continue to watch it very closely and report on what is happening in Tigray, and we will bring you that information. So uh, have a good Sunday. Thanks for joining us. Good day.